welcome to Scott's Inverts. I'm Scott. These are the inverts and today we're having a look at the genus Armadillion and the species that we're featuring in today's video is the Marculatum zebra but this care video will cover any of the species under that genus. The Marculatum zebra are absolutely beautiful to look at, really really easy to care for. We ordered ours off eBay and I will put that link down in the description if you're in the UK and you want to order some yourself. Now what I've done is I've been keeping isopods for around two years but I thought I'd do the whole video from unboxing them to setting them up and then some classic close-up shots for you guys as well as. So let's get into today's video. So our armadillion can be found in the south of France, Italy, down to Greece, across to Bulgaria and even across to Turkey. Experienced temperature ranges between 20 to 30 degrees and rainfall between one to two inches to literally two to three foot um, so humidity you want humidity in our enclosure but not too much and I'll show you how we achieve this when we get round to the setup so guys here it is this is how most of your wood lice species come um, especially the ones that are not in the hotter hot environments now these guys can experience near freezing temperatures so that's completely fine being in there without any heat pack they're in that plastic container there and um, we ordered 12 we actually received 14 but two had passed away in transit so I'll put those guys in there anyway and then the other ones should eat them now these guys aren't a calcium dependent species so we're all good to go without adding extra calcium so the substrate that we're putting in now is lots of hardwood um, mulch down oak leaves and magnolia leaves what we've done is crush those up into tiny segments and including that into the hardwood substrate um, or a beetle mix substrate will do completely fine as well. That's one of these spiderling containers that we've got there, which is completely fine for these guys, um, only having 12 in there. And we're putting some shiitake block substrate in there now as well. That'll really, really help kickstart these guys off. And also the springtails. Now for moisture, we want to create a damp side and a dry side which is pretty important for these guys. So I'm going to put moss over the one side and leave the other side bare. As they get bigger, you can expand the size of the container they're in and it's a good idea to actually put full size magnolia leaves in there and oak leaves so they can go underneath and hide. What's also important is in that substrate, I've put a couple of pinches of sand and what the sand does is it, is it helps these guys to molt so these guys will bury down to molt and as soon as they can find something that they can get their molt attached to that's where they'll be and they can scratch it off but just look at these absolutely stunning see why they're called zebra and we're going to get those straight into the enclosure and like um if you do like the isopod care video and you do want me to do some more maybe for a different genus um, like this video the more likes we get if we get around 40 I'll do another one for a different genus that moss that they come in with um, I'm just going to reuse that and keep that in there as well and it is as simple as that all set up ready to go um, now they will eat all that hardwood and shiitake mushroom block that's in there um, what you can also do is put fresh uh, vegetables in there they will munch that they do like a bit of carrot and some cucumber going in like I said they're not calcium dependent um, which is a bit of a bonus um, with fish flakes it's been noted fish flakes they say fish flakes do tend to be used quite a lot with isopods but it's noted in a few studies that it actually slows down their reproduction and their growth so I do use fish flakes but I only use them maybe once a month and I'll just put a couple in in the corner. Um, it's always a good idea if you put in fruit or vegetables in with these guys is to remove them when they start going mouldy. Now you would think hold on a minute these guys will eat mould in the wild and that is true but in the enclosure the mould can attract nasties such as more fruit flies and other nasty bacteria so you can leave the mould in there for a few days but do not leave it in for too long because you don't want to attract the wrong stuff. Now here's some close-ups of these little guys. Their antennas are going absolutely crazy with the little legs going. They are a very, very active species. Always on the lookout for food. Absolutely beautiful. So guys, that was a care video for the armadillion genus. So any species that's under the armadillion, that care video will um, definitely cover for you guys. 
But like I said, they are absolutely stunning, absolutely gorgeous. If you want more care videos um, for different genuses of ice depositors, could do keep a fair few. Um, give me a like. The more likes we get, if we get to around 40 likes, I'll do another one, maybe for Porcilio Genus, maybe. Um, but we shall see. And um, remember, we are live every single Tuesday between 8 and 10 p.m. That's British Standard Time, so UK time. And as always, we shall see you again on the next one.